This episode is proudly supported by Open Table. Nearly one third of diners are booking same day. So they're making those decisions on the spot. And 10% are, do- are making their bookings within just a few hours. And so it's why it's so important to have you know, booking software like Open Table, which allows your diners to discover you. And so when restaurants are on platforms like Open Table, they're much more likely to be discovered. We help diners to connect to restaurants. Ultimately, having technology, using technology, helps you to reattach to those diners. Experience the power of Open Table. For an exclusive offer, visit restaurant.opentable.com.au forward slash DITW. There's something about walking through a restaurant, all the kitchens are firing, the staff is smiling, the uniforms are all pressed. There's just something so special about that. And I think every restaurateur, if you're passionate about this business, there's nothing quite as um, comforting as walking through your restaurant and seeing everything just move the way it should move. This is the Deep in the Weeds podcast. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Last time we caught up with Ross Lusted, he'd opened his dream restaurant, Woodcut, and was reveling in the hum of a busy restaurant. But then a four-month lockdown changed everything. As he prepares to open up again, he joins us. Ross, how are you? Uh, well rested. <laughs> what's, what's this period of time been like for you? You worked for so long to open up this restaurant and then a really big lockdown arrived. What sort of impact has it had on you? Oh, I mean, obviously the obvious, um, you know, we have 150 odd staff that we love and care about. And, um, you know, we just entered this amazing sort of opening relation, our relationship with our team. You, you work on that for so long and then suddenly it comes to a grinding halt. Uh, and I remember we sort of got the notice that, we waited for the announcement and it was 11 o'clock on a Friday and by 11 o'clock that night we were, um, you know, salting all the chopping boards and emptying out the fridges and that was it. It was, and you know, so sort of in a 12 hour period, you didn't, you didn't even really have time to go, have we canceled the lobster order? You know, oh no, they're arriving tomorrow. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm a glass half full type of guy and, um, I sort of walked away from it thinking this is only going to be two weeks. So let's get together with the team and let's look at what we, you know, you work so hard to get these restaurants open and uh, admittedly you're exhausted by the time you get there. (laughs) So you sort of have to, and I looked at it and I thought, you know, here's an opportunity. Who gets an opportunity after six months of operating to go, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? Let's sit down, let's reassess and then come back and better and stronger in two weeks, you know, that two weeks went to four weeks. And then we sort of, we didn't really know when we were going to reopen. And, um, I think that that makes it really challenging. Um, I think there was not only sort of not knowing, um, how long it's going to be, but where the government is up to in terms of support, um, for business, for employees, for and and where you know does everyone have the mental health capacity from last lockdown to re-enter uh, another lockdown? And you know I'd never really been through it because we closed the bridge room when the last the last lockdown. So so we were sort of working on a, you know, and that's why in deep in the weeds I said to you, you know our story is a good story because we're working on these things that are happening that are really exciting. And, um, so yeah, it, it's very difficult. Um, it does give you pause to think, is this what we're living with now? And there's still a lot of unanswered questions about how we will operate, um, moving forward, not only for the rest of this year, but what happens next year, the year after that. And is this the new normal? You know, you look at other countries in the world and no one's really worked out how to, I think work with this in a in a way that um, you just feel um, you have a safe work environment, 
a safe um, customer environment and some way of forward planning. I think we are all navigating something now that is new to everyone and that um, it certainly has its challenges. You mentioned that uh, originally you saw it as a chance to work on um, the business and fix things that weren't working and maybe change things. Is there things that have changed or will change when you open? Yeah, I think I think we, you know, you just you, we were sort of starting to to sharpen the pencil a little bit and fine tune systems and. Um, but you, you're just chasing your tail all the time because you're operating a really behemoth of a restaurant. Um, so to take time out with your team and go, you know, do we need a kitchen manager? Yeah, you know what? We need a we need a kitchen administrator. Let's employ someone who who wants to. I don't need chefs punching in data when they should be cooking. You know, so let's get that person on. And so we have that person now um, when we reopen um, with a really specific skill set. So we've also had time to recruit those people and um, look at what what is what does everyone's job entail and are they are they being the best person that they can be in that role and are they being satisfied? Are they getting um, is their succession planning in place? All the things that we talk about that you sort of don't have time to do. So this is a point where you can reflect and then really be much more strategic. Um, so that's what I've taken away from it. Um, I built a workbench and I made a whole lot of sculptures, um, bought a spray painter and a few more power tools. So, so I've, I've had to mentally occupy my, my mind and my hands, um, which, I've, which I've always done – um, in the past, I, I sort of, I think we talked about this last time, I need to be working on something else to help me to cook and to focus on, on I, I can't sit down and just say, okay, let's write the menu. I, I need to be engaged in something else and working on some other things. And then I just seem to just drift off into it, you know. Um, so that, that's that been great. Um, you know, obviously, with having Bronte home, doing homeschooling, um, she had a sixth birthday, and so that's really it's amazing to see her progression. She she really blossomed in lockdown last year. She learned to read, and and I just thought, God, you know, like in some ways, you can see in some systems where you know kids are out of school for three months and they go, you know, and chase reindeer in a forest, and they do other things, you know, that is so much more about life than just. Um, schooling schooling in a different way so that's been really positive and exciting um so yeah you know like i talked to sussman today about what's happening now with what fishermen are there and also you know we talked a little bit about this last time about how critical it is with um our, our farmers that are struggling there you know everyone everyone's in the same situation but it's it's who's gonna who's gonna be there when we open, um, and that they're real questions, you know. Um, so talking to our suppliers over the last sort of months, going, how are you guys going, and you know, what's your strategy looking like? Are you still interested in <laughs> supplying restaurants? Or you know, we we've lost we've lost a lot of staff um, because, and this is true, and and very unfortunate but our industry is too unstable and you know some really talented people are moving containers at the shipping terminal because it's consistent you know they it sounds really odd but you know people that we've had in roles for a long time not only at the bridge room but but also at woodcut they've um just said this is just too too many unknowns in our industry and that's really frightening for me you know i don't know if you've got this other feedback but um but there's a lot of exciting things happen you know like people opening new different businesses they're really really pivoted you know obviously with our shared services um within the building that we in we couldn't do any takeaway or anything like that so um and i don't know what that brings you know like is it a distraction? Is it um, would that have given us something that is that I, I don't know already? Um, you know, a long time ago I worked with Neil on the Qantas project, and every time I look at that, I think God, it's just more like Qantas. <laughs> you know, so I don't know if I want that in my life, but you know, and you know, like I think 
in some ways we were lucky we got to open and like I said now we get to we get to reflect um, which you never have in a business never I've never seen it in, in hospitality that you open something new and go oh let's just stop for a, you know a month and reassess what we've done how do you, how, what do you think about that guys no let's change that okay let's we're ready to open the doors again let's go what about from a personal perspective it was a chance to reflect about what you're doing with the business but what about for yourself and your role in the industry um, I don't you know I I, I, I see myself as just the, you know the same person. I'm very passionate about this industry. I, I want this industry to be successful. I see it being eroded more and more by um, pressures that are not that I don't. I'm not going to say they're out of our control, but it's just becoming harder and harder. Um, you know, last, last lockdown, I said, I think we talked about this and I said, you know, if a three hat restaurant had done takeaway, you would have lost three hats overnight, but all bets were off after the last lockdown. And like this lockdown, it, it's just blown me away. The young talent, like Ned Parker, one of our chefs, um, was making pastries for, and all the, all the, um, all the money they raised and they raised a lot of money. Um, it went to beyond blue charity. And I was so inspired by that, you know, because I thought, so here's a young guy, very talented, came to us from the Ledbury and, um, you know, just pivoted and challenged himself um, and did something extraordinary. So I think we've seen different talent come out of other people. I've been working on a couple of things that are personal projects for me that are within our industry um, that will that will come to fruition later. But... I, I think it's a time of, of, like I said, it's been a time of big reflection and also um, just hoping that the people that support our business and that, that runs through, you know, from farmers, fishermen, uh, butchers through to media, PR companies, everyone that drives, you know, what you do. I mean, it's, it's, it's all hospitality is a big part. And, you know, no one needs to go to restaurants, but we're, we're a country that really loves and embraces restaurants and we bat way out of our league in this country. Um, but personally for me, it, it has made me think just how vulnerable our industry is and how we, if this is a trend that continues, how much talent we will lose um, because of the instabilities and will, and will this become... The, um, you know, I'd hate to say it, but restaurants that are just safe and generic because they need to be safe and generic because you just don't know what's around the corner, you know. What have you missed about Woodcut during this time? I mean, our staff. I mean, our staff for us, you know, that's, um, I'm not going to say it's like going to war because I've never gone to war, but I think, you know, when you get through an opening and the people that come with you and they work with you for many years and, you know, the camaraderie that you have, just being in the restaurant today, you know, seeing all the guys come back and they're really excited and, you know, I don't know that anyone is happy sitting on the sofa getting a check from the government. Um, there might be some people that they think, okay, well, that's that's my right and it is everyone's right to, to do that. And it's great that we actually have that system in Australia. And, um, but I know there's a lot of people who are just really passionate about their careers. They want to work. They want to be there. And of course, you know, the other thing that makes restaurants, you know, the reason I'm in the business is our customers. You know, it's, it's the, the staff first and foremost and our customers. It's, there's something about a restaurant. There's something about walking through a restaurant and just, you know, I saw Neil do a bloody star jump the other day because he's so excited, you know. And I've I worked with Neil for a long time and still where he is today and the position that he is and what he brings to our industry, there's still this passion and there's still this, you know, he's like a little kid opening up, a, you know, a packet. I mean, like a little bloody toy. And it's great. And that's what we all need in this business. I mean, it's really exciting to see that, you know. And Margaret's a really different restaurant. And, and that's great because it's just one more thing that is contributing to making this a diverse industry, um, not only in Sydney, but, you know, really competing on a world stage. It's fantastic. Ross, you're opening tomorrow. How, how's it going to feel to open the doors on a spring Friday in Sydney? Oh, you know, I think um, – 
Sonny was reading a book the other day. It said uh, even a rainy day is a great day. And um, there's something, like I said before, there's something about walking through a restaurant, all the kitchens are firing, the staff is smiling, the uniforms are all pressed. There's just something so special about that. And not because Woodcut and the location, I think every restaurateur, if you're passionate about this business, there's nothing quite as um, comforting as walking through your restaurant and seeing everything just move the way it should move. Um, I have the added advantage of looking out over one of the most spectacular harbours in the city. And I think, um, I'm not going to say I didn't appreciate it uh, when we first opened, but this is going to be a really, really special opening, reopening. I think the staff and everyone are so keen to put this period behind us. And, uh, I mean, the, just the notes that I've got from customers um, who are just, you know, can't wait to see you not only open but to, to support you and to see that you're going to be there next year and successful. And that's really what I'm looking forward more than anything. Well, Ross, there's a lot of people looking forward to that too and we're absolutely honoured that you've got a little bit of time to share on Deep in the Weeds and no doubt we'll catch up again soon. Um, please keep in touch. Good luck and uh, we'll talk again soon. And I've got to say, Hux, you do an amazing job, mate. You can edit that bit out, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Talk to you. This is the Deep in the Weeds podcast. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Stay tuned as we take a deep dive into the lives of the incredible people who ply their trade in the food and hospitality sector. Special thanks to executive producer Rob Locke for making this all happen. Follow us on Instagram at Deep in the Weeds Podcast or email us at podcast at deepintheweeds.com.au. Stay safe and be well. <laughs>